Can you start presenting yourself, man? Yeah, my name is Vinicius. Uh, I'm from Brazil. I love it, this kind of stuff, ultra cycling, this kind of challenge to be somewhere or some some places that so amazing to cycle. Yeah. So we we're in Peru. Yeah. That's the second time we meet. Yeah, second time. Yeah, I I was here last year. I was lucky, a little bit, but. It was an amazing experience last year, that's why I came back. I came back to, to check the, the different parts of the route and to see again those mountains. So beautiful mountains. So, just a quick reminder, because some people don't know you. <laughs> you are a veteran of Inca Divide 2018. Yes. So you finished it yes. at the Boikiman Peru in 2018. Mm -hmm. And you're also one of the very few Brazilians who finished transcontinental race, right? Yes, I'm the first Brazilian that started and finished the transcontinental in 2016. And we had another guy, another Pedro, that finished, we finished last uh, 2017. Okay. And you also organized some, uh, some brevet? Yeah, some brevet. In, in Brazil. Brazil? Yeah, one of the, usually the, uh, the cyclist says one of the toughest clubs in Brazil. I, I'm proud to, to be the guy that usually have 20 guys starting, you just two or three finished. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been participating, taking yes. part to Inca Divide 2019. 2019. Few, few things, few reminders about 2019. Mandatory route. Mandatory route. So different from last year where people yeah. could uh, go on different ways. Physical control points without the, 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 the virtual control points. Yeah. You so. have to take care about the route because the tracker is your. Uh, is if you, is, you. You wait to check if you are doing correct in the route or not. Yeah. And then you have to take care and then get your stamp until the control point is still open. And so far, so 44 athletes have started out of 50 that were registered. Uh, we have five finishers with one Brazilian. One Brazilian, yes. What, what, what do you think about that? Because you, you couldn't finish this yes. year, but what do you think? What are your first thoughts for five people finishing so far yes, well, out of 44? It's, it's, uh, last year, I, I did almost the full route and I didn't have food poisoning. I didn't have problem with altitude. I feel okay, it's low at altitude, but I didn't feel it, I didn't have nausea, I didn't have headaches, nothing. But this year I had food poison in the second day, Okay. and then I tried for three days to recover, but I got fever, got vomiting, diarrhea, everything possible to ruin my race, I had it. And But looking for the everyone, I don't know if it's preparation, uh, maybe, maybe it's a kind of physiology, maybe, I don't know, the weather, uh, maybe the weather this year at the altitude is, you have more thin air than last year because it's hotter during the day, last year is not so hot during the day, Yeah. and then it's hot. Oh, we had uh, 38, Yeah, 38, 38 degrees. Climbed, the first climb last year, I got 3 degrees, this year I had 12, 10, it's much warmer than last year. So 38 for the max? And minus 15 for, for, for the, the minimum. minimum. Mm. minimum. Yeah. It's a huge difference, huge time gradient. So would you say and, uh, temperature gradient. Would you say that the the fact that today we we have like 15, maybe 20 percent of finishers out of uh, the total athletes, would you say that it's just the random factors of no, the no. race? No, or because what? last year the guys did a different route. Yeah. I, as I said, I yeah. prefer to do the most of the mandatory route, but a lot of them did the tours to low altitude. Yeah. And then they reach the, uh, the high altitude and then go down, recover, go up, get down, and then... Yeah, this was not possible for this year. No, no, no. But what we... And then we look after Payasca. There was the people get much more, uh, get more the, the, the symptoms of the high altitude. Yeah. After yeah, because they, they stayed above three thousand thirty-five hundred meters. And there was more. There were more passes above four thousand meters on this year. Yes. We had uh, we had Punta Olimpica. We had yeah, after Chacas, uh, after Chacas, San Marcos. San Marcos. We had 
the Antamina mine with at least two to three passes above 4,400. And we had Pastorori with three passes above 49. Yeah, you stay. So, yeah, you stay, oh, stay very high. Okay. So it's like, it's, it's almost like 10 passes above 4,500 meters almost. No? Yeah. We didn't have anything like that. I, I got minus 15, minus, almost minus 17 last year. But no snow, no rain. But so would you say that this year, the fact that we have only a very few number of finishes is linked to the fact that the factors of the race are so random that you can't predict how many people would finish? Yes, definitely. It's so random. You can be prepared, but you can drink something and mess up everything. But you, can, you, you are in very good shape, you have a me mechanical, uh, mechanical problems, and then you cannot go anymore, you cannot go further. But you, maybe you have perfect food, perfect everything, and then you're not prepared for the altitude, <laughs> you fuck at the altitude. And you can have bad weather at the very last the, minute, yeah. we've seen with uh, Felipe. The Felipe, the, the Ecuadorian yeah. guy who's done lots of adventure racing, yeah. he scratched uh, in, next to Antamina. Look, you have such a people that tried to Altamina, feel sick about the altitude, and then got back. Yeah. Go there so far. And then, no, 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 I can go. You have so, Carlos Hayes as well, that's a, a veteran. From yeah, last yeah. Year, and who rolled almost the, the entire course. Of the, one of the only ones that did the full route last yeah, year. Yeah. He scratched as well. So. Now we got your bike in the back, the one yeah. that you brought for in Kidivai 2019. And 2018, was it the same? No, no, it's different. It's Last different. year I used aluminum. Okay. Uh, and and this is carbon. I, this is carbon. And I used uh, a more relaxed uh, geometry last year. Okay. More, not more, more adventure. This one is more racer. More racer. Yeah, it's more aggressive because I, but it's much more comfortable because the material. Yeah. What would you change? What would you improve if you were to come back be, next year? Should be Compared to that, uh, to that configuration. So okay. just a quick reminder, it's a yeah. carbon frame. Carbon frame. Uh, aggressive road uh, configuration. Yes. You have... Uh, one by, and now just one chain ring. Yeah, one single chain ring. Yeah. You're running, what? 46. 46 in the 46, back. 38. 38 in the front. And what's the size of your tires? Yeah, 40. 40C. 40. 40C on 40C. 700, right? Yes. 700. Okay, so 40C uh, tires. What would you change, man? For next year? Yeah. Let's say... The wheel. The wheel. The Only wheels. the wheel. Okay. I use it... Uh, I, I'm, if, I, if I come back, I plan to use 60... 50, 60, 60, uh, 50B. Okay. 27. 27.5. Wheels. Wider tires. And what about the length? Of the, like the width of the tires? What 2. would you 0. use? 2.0. 50. Yeah. 50 millimeters. Yeah, yeah, 2.0. Okay. It, most of the people will think that we will be slow at the the tarmac. Not at all. Yeah, because Sofian was running 2.25, huh? 2.25 on 29er, 29er, on, 29er. on a mountain biker. Yeah, mountain bike. Yeah. yeah. So you would because run 2 inches, 50 yeah. millimeters tires and 27.5. Not to be faster, it's to be comfortable and to be, when you are in the gravel session, control of your bike. You how about the, how about the gravel section? How would you define this? So, twenty seven point five with uh, fifty millimeters tires. That would be the main change yeah. you would you, you make to your. So, what, you how have, do you how do you describe? Can you describe the gravel that you experience so that people can understand exactly? Yeah, the, the gravel when here is rocky. Okay. It's not so regular or steady. Something that you can go fast, and you have a lot of dust. Something like that. Okay. At least ten. 20 centimeters of dust because they have huge, huge trucks uh, close to the miners and they are making, I don't know, some reparations that they, but it's, it's dry, it's a dry season. And then you have this smoke coming over, it's dust. And then if you have just a, 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 a if you have just a, a small tire, uh -huh. you go inside, you, you cannot steer, you cannot drive. And then it's dangerous, you have to go so slow so you're yeah. losing time actually losing time? with thinner tires. Yeah, and and the, your back and your arms to stabilize the bicycle. Yeah. And then, if you use the tire to help you on know, that, you'll be much more comfortable. If you are comfortable, you can 
you can uh, not get so tired at the end of the day, yeah. and then you can... And you add can, some miles. Yes, add some miles. So 20 kilometers per day because you're more, more comfortable. What about the... So that's the mechanical part. Yeah, mechanical part. Yeah. How about the challenges of uh, finding like something like water, uh, food, and accommodations? What, yeah. What have you thought about this edition? What yeah. would be the main challenges that you would like to share with people watching? It's, it's hard to say that it's easy, but it's not hard to find places to buy food and water. The difference is a lot of people save weight because, okay, I'm carrying three bottles, almost 800 millimeters each bottle. I saw guys running with small bottles. <laughs> That's why if, if you save weight maybe you you're going to to save water as well and then you can maybe get dry in a place without water or then you can keep in saving water saving water it's not possible to save water so you would suggest to bring like big water bottles water bottle. to make sure that you're carrying a lot yes, of water at least three okay at least three. plus you have the you know that now because you yes. have the experience the high altitude yes you can drink much more than the below and normally what's, what's happening is that you're drinking less. You're drinking less. The thirst yeah. is going. going. You don't but feel thirsty, so you don't drink. You have to keep drinking. Yep. And then if you find a place, fill up your bottles. That, that's, uh, for me, is the key. And I, it's important. When you fill up a bottle like that, it's one kilo. One kilo the altitude. The feeling is more than one kilo. Yeah. But you need that stuff. Because you don't know what you maybe you you arrive in a in a town nine nine p.m. And nothing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing, you have nothing. Okay. Yeah. And maybe you, you ask someone a water and that water maybe it's poison. <laughs> That's why you have to carry much water, much more water because you can assure okay, a closed bottle open, fill up, and then maybe avoid a little problems later on. <laughs> yeah. How about the the main factor that I think is uh, the main challenge for most people that are looking at the race and maybe would like to participate, but they don't know, that's the high altitude. Because that's the highest yeah. cycling, the uh, unsupported cycling race on earth because we are climbing almost at 5,000 meters. Yeah. What would you be your, what is your view, what are your views on that and what, what would you advise the people to be, to be here? To be here. Yeah, you need to get used about to ride in cold weather. Cold, okay. Cold. Yeah, for a long day, slowly, yeah. with a lot of climb, climb down here, climb down here. You need to get used of that, to, high, to ride 200 with 4,000. Okay. You, you need to get used about that. And because, for, for example, for the altitude, or, or even you have chambers to... to, to to train before or get here earlier, that's a so good... Altitude good, chambers. Yeah, okay. yeah okay. Altitude, altitude chambers. Or get here, I don't know, one week earlier. I'm the, trying. The, 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 the altitude training, go up, sleep down, go up, sleep down. Yeah, that's what week. Guillaume has done. The yeah. Belgium guy, the Belgium finisher, who's done pretty well. Yes. That was his first time. He yeah, went a week Leo. before training and then coming back. Leo did that. True. Yeah, did that trip crossing, uh, crossing Bolivia. Yeah. And then I think he is the most acclimated, acclimated uh, yeah. uh, above all. Because he, I don't know, he spent 10, 15 days in out. Yeah. And then get below here at the, the sea level, very well acclimated. And how would you sum up the experience, like to, to make a conclusion with uh, this podcast? If you, like, if, you, if you want to see places that not possible or easily to go, as a tourist, because if you want, if you like to see why why these mountains, or a, or usually say a sea of mountains above five thousand, six thousand, come here. The Peruvian Andes is unbelievable beautiful. Those the Cordillera Branca, the, the white Cordillera is unbelievable beautiful. I, uh, I, I, I I I said that for some friends that usually ride in in Switzerland. Yeah. I prefer here, <laughs> because here is wild. There is so well uh, designed, everything is beautiful, green, here is wild. 
and then you, over there you just see one peak, another peak here you see. Look over there, where I, where I go, where I would go, because everything is higher than here. Correct. Unbelievable. Man, you did a huge race. Yeah. Would you come back, man? I, I want. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.